family. I'm your baby. I have different people all over the world. You're welcome today to this special occasion, the genocide exhibition of the indigenous people of Biafra. Before we kick off, we have to call the presence of uh, Chiku Okike Abiyama. And I will call Pastor Moore here to lead us in this supplication and communicate with our creator. I do be one family. I do be one family. One family. I do be one family. I do be. God bless you all. We are going to come in the name of our fathers. We are going to welcome them in two minutes silence. That they will take the glory of whatever is going to transpire today. And so we will look at the time for about two minutes silence for the dead. Father, we thank you. To go to heaven, we thank you. thank you. May their souls and spirits rest not until Biafra is achieved. Yeah. The immortal Father, you have made us what we are. You have given us leaders. That we present all our leaders that are here and our supreme leader before thee. In the mighty name of Chukwu Okiyabim we pray. Yes, sir. Glorious Father, we that are following, those are our brothers and sisters that are here, that are watching us all over the world, immortal God, that we present them to before thee. In the mighty name of Chukwu Okiyabim we pray. Yes, Glorious Father, the nations of the world have said they will ignore our pledge to restore Biafra because you said so. You have the power to do all things. When the time breaks, you will touch them in your almighty hand. In the name of Chukwok, we pray. Glory of Father, there is nothing impossible before thee. You have chosen us to do this work. May you continue to straighten our pockets. Straighten us. That we will not we will not be dry. We will lack finance to finance this project. In the mighty name of God, we pray. As we are going to be here today, precious daddy, as we are going to do all in your name, not in our own name. Send more heavenly angels to continue to fight this battle and bring it to your own logical conclusion. In the name of Chukwu Okigabe, we pray. He said, Every eye that rises up against us in judgment, that you condemn them today. Those that bless us shall be blessed. Those that curse us shall be cursed. It shall be a blessing to the nations we are. Bless it to our fatherland. In the mighty name of Chukwu Okigabe, we pray. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Lord. for your heart and our pledge. Yes, In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you.
آه بیافرا آه بیافرا آه بیافرا آه بیافرا You are a chosen generation and the children of Shukur Kabiyama. For you to be present here today means that you have been called to serve. And Chukur Kabiyama who called you will never let you down. He bless all of you abundantly and lead you back safely from where you have come today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I will ask for uh, the question of uh, European Rep. Mazabain. Thank you so much for that. Um, let me just thank all the Biafrans in general that are here. For without you, all, and all of us, of course, we wouldn't actually be making any improvement or making any headway. I thank you so much. There are, of course, some leadership uh, in different uh, European countries and other, uh, from other continents. Um, continental Rep. Maze, <laughs> American Continental Rep. Odomoke. Oh That is my Zoe video game. The says, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. It didn't say religion. It said ye shall know the truth. It didn't say religion. He said the truth. It's your book. Thank you, Mazi. All the way from United States of America, California, for that matter. Thank you so much for being us, for being with us today. Um, we are having a guest of honor here, um, one of us, of course, uh, Dr. Cardo, uh, to do a presentation for us today. Please give me a hand of applause. IPOB, one, one family. family. IPOB, one, one family. family. One family. IPOB. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. And those of you uh, national coordinators, of course, um, from Europe and uh, other continents that are here today, um, I really thank you so much. And I will go to. Um, Oh yes, uh, I, I have. Um, I have. Um, okay, national coordinator from uh, uh, a great country of Canada, uh, Mazi Okoro is here. He also came from Canada. Mazi Okoro is here. All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! Biafra! Freedom! Freedom! Biafra! Just like everybody has said. You are a chosen generation. He yes. said, I started it, don't give up. Yes. And now, for all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> uh, though, uh, we always say ladies first, of course, we all know that. Um, mm -hmm. But um, there is a deviation here in this uh, very pathway. But not, nevertheless, we have a great woman. Among this very struggle, you all know her. Carol Monday from UK. Hey. I love you. I want you. Welcome. All right. At this juncture, I would like to wrap up. Oh, all right. All right. It seems uh, Lady Carol is coming down here. All right. Then we have, of course, our very industrious uh, finance officer in the name of. Uh, I understand. Um, I, I understand. She went out to make sure that um, she uh, gets things in place to make everybody comfortable in terms of your tummy. So she will be back soon. Thank you so much. At this juncture, I will shift the microphone to.
All right. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been asked to uh, uh, extend the microphone to our great lady Carol Monday. She has something to say. Thank you so much. Just want to say thank you. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everybody that has come out today to support Germany here and the new headquarters. Um, I want to say that Biafra is a spirit. Um, somehow it grabbed me. I, I think that uh, in my life, if you, if you know me personally, in my life, I, God sent me on a path which brought me back to the UK and uh, which endeavoured me to meet Mazi Nandi Kamut and Mazi Uchima for here. And I, and I was taken over by the Biafra spirit. Um, because everybody that knows me, I'm, I'm a British citizen, although my father's Irish, which apparently is uh, forgivable for uh, <laughs> So I'm forgiven for being British because my father's Irish. Um, but um, yeah, so it, it is a spirit and it does take over you, regardless of who you are, seemingly. Um, and I will say that the Alpha Spirit is waking you all up. And it's going to continue waking everybody up. And everything that belongs to Biafra will be taken back. By you the said? You said? You said? That's all I've got to say. May Biafra spirit keep you going, keep you strong, and take you all back to Biafra. I don't want the Afro love you. Hi, Pierre. 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 Hi, before you continue, I think it's uh, very important that uh, we also recognize those who may not have been uh, on the list. Uh, we have friends of Biafra here. We also have the wider uh, Biafra family. Is there anyone who is from uh, coastal regions of Biafra? You know what I mean by that. It's very important that recognize our brothers and sisters. We are all here from the Do we have... I come from my mother come from the second Okay, that's fine. You can. Yeah. So we have our sister here. You want to the Mother, please. <laughs> Say hello to Biafra and Sandra. All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! Um, my name is Kate Eka. I come from Ogoja. Ogoja is um, Cross River. It's part of Cross River State. And um, Ogoja is Biafra Black. <laughs> Really, really happy and proud to be a Biafra. Ever since I would say, ever since I come to understand, and I would say, thank God Almighty for our director actually, who has uh, put us through or who has enlightened us. Because ever since I come to understand that I am a Biafra and the spirit of Biafra that takes over me, I have. Uh, become a better person. I have become stronger. I really thank God and I thank God also for our deputy who is here with us today. You have really, really made us strong as I am today. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the zoo may do, I am unshakable. Hey. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, 
coordinators, coordinators of units who are here today, you are welcome, you are recognized. And uh, pro, uh, we shall recognize your presence also. I remember that storm still on the way Biafra. Now, I will hand over the microphone to the deputy head of the director of state. To make a very short, just written here, short welcome speech. As is me. Oh, hey, Biafra, once again. Oh, hey, Biafra. Yes, um, we have gathered today, um, of course, um, uh, deliberately and for very, very important reasons. Um, as you may see the title over there, you see those pictures over there, they speak of loud voices. And it is good that we gather to um, hold those culprits who are very much responsible for what is committed to our people and still committing against our people. Heinous crimes against Biafrans um, of all walks of life, being maimed daily, being slaughtered daily. They speak, like I said, the pictures can speak maybe a lot better. Killings have been going on since, of course, unfortunately, the invasion of Biafra land by the, the leadership of the British government. Um, ever before 1914, and since after, afterwards, we've been slaughtered non-stop. Um, but if nobody speaks about these pictures, nobody speaks about our plight, we've got that very responsibility to speak out for ourselves. It is our own priority to send across this unfortunate gospel to the world um, about what's happening. And if you keep silent, the situation definitely will get worse. We're doing what we're doing today because we want to stop something and we want to achieve something. So that um, I will once again, like it is written here very short, but once again, thank you for coming to be part of this very um, unfortunate, of course, occasion. I'll put it that way because um, we're not here to be cozy or to uh, celebrate, but uh, we're here to demonstrate. Um, a very unfortunate event in our lifetime and also before we came. Um, in any case, it must be borne in mind of all Biafrans that something has to be done to stop these um, criminal activities against ourselves, against the future generation. And if nothing is done, my brothers and sisters definitely will be wiped off the map of the world. And that's not what we're looking for. 
we are trying to look for a way to get out of this hole. Therefore, we want the world to see the pictures, we want the world to uh, see the evidences, we want the world to be on the side of Biafans, the children of Tukot Kabiam, that indeed the situation is too bad and in peril. And therefore, at this juncture, I welcome you once again, and I'll hand over the microphone for further programs ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, the Deputy Federal Director of State. Um, I will hand over the microphone to the Deputy Leader of the Indigenous People of Biafra all over the world. Mazi Mekfo, I like listening to him. I'm a professional student. Facts come out mainly from intelligent people. All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! All hail Biafra! I P O B one family. I am not hearing anything. <laughs> IPOB One Family. We are beginning. Yes. IPOB One Family. One Family. IPOB. No matter what they say, we remain formidable. Yes. Yes. We remain indestructible. Yes. Why is that so? The most I God has said. And heaven and earth are bearing us witness that the land of Biafra shall be restored in our own time. We shall be witnesses of it. For the sake of our gallant heroes and heroines who pay the ultimate price that we may have our freedom. For what us of doubt, they courageously defended the cause we are fighting for today. And therefore, we have every justification, morally or otherwise, to continue to defend that cause that they have fought for until the end of time. And at this particular point in time, our enemies are not sleeping. They are formidable, I tell you. But we are even more there. Are more desperate to put them where they belong. They are liars. They are imposters. They are the sons and daughters of darkness. Yes. And you know what? Do you know whom you are? Yes. You are sons and daughters of light. Yes. 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 And when the spirit of light comes. What happens to darkness? Yeah. 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 That is why you are the salt of the earth, and anything we do today, the eyes of the world is upon you. And that is why also we must not relent. We must deliver. We are here today for yet another symbolic event. We are here to, as always, Remember our fallen heroes and heroines who pay the ultimate price for our sake and for the reasons of their friends to come that may have our freedom. They were in their millions. They were men, women, and children. They gallantly defended us. Until date, some people are telling us to forget about them, to just move on. And some April foods in Biafra land. <laughs> <laughs> Political merchants and those mothered by uh, and fathered by House of bigots are telling us that Biafra is dead and buried. But because 
there are still men and women of conscience like you. We are where we are today. They say that their fast shall not be discussed anymore. But today, what is happening? They are not only talking about Biafra, they are also trying to stop us. But have they succeeded? No! no. no. And they will never. 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 They say that we are terrorists. Today the world is bearing us witness. You traveled from different countries, you crossed border, and we even announced that we are coming. We invited the zoo officials to come. I heard that one or two of them were uh, was around yesterday. But you know what? When the spirit of Biafra descends on anyone, especially those whose hands are not clean, they will stamp up the same. Where are they today? They are not clean. Because they have no place here. And we are saying that the spirit of our gallant heroes and heroines who pay the ultimate price and on whose behalf we are here today shall continue to pursue them, shall continue to hound and hunt them like animals until they disappear from the face of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. More importantly, we are here because we stand for the truth. Our leader, Mazin Nam De Kanu, has not only led us by example, he is in the forefront. And there are a number of legacies that cannot be surmounted that he has put in place. One of them is the virtue of truth, tenacity, courage, and resilience. And we are all expected to imbibe those qualities. I'm very sure that most of us have it. Because if we don't have it, we will not be here. The zoo called Nigeria is in an almighty mess. Because of their treachery, because of the atrocities that they have committed against the Biafran people. And we will not also forget this saying that the evil men do follow them. Today we are not saying that it will follow them, it will continue to live with them and continue to define them. And it is our responsibility to put them where they belong. It shall be well with all IPOB family members all over the world and their families. We are here reminding ourselves of our gallant heroes and heroines who made us whom we are today. We have earlier observed too many silence, but no amount of time is enough. It is our prayer that their souls will continue to rest in peace. Yes. Yes. But, may they never rest in peace where their murderers are. May they continue to hunt them. May they continue to hound them. Until they disappear from the face of this planet earth. Mohammed Buhari is their leader. He shall never be well with him. He shall never be well with anybody who has been supporting and is still supporting Mohammed Buhari. It shall not be well with our hands and the work. We have a reason for that. Yes. It shall not be well with all the present Southeast governors in Biafra land. Yes. The same way they deprived our families of the joy that comes from family units, it's the same way that peace, happiness will be scarce in their homes. Yes. We are here to restore the land of Biafra. Because we are ordained. Biafra is a spiritual journey. And anybody who is not part of this all important restoration effort is very free to chicken out. 
we want to situate these all important defines in the proper perspective. Several years, several decades ago, like we reminded ourselves yesterday, when we were performing the official ground opening ceremony of the IPOB Worldwide Headquarters. This country, Germany, hosted the most ignoble and infamous conference called Berlin Conference. In that conference, they effectively, of course, the Europeans mostly, the Americans were there as well. They perfected the plot, not to do any other thing, but to enslave and balkanize African states. They introduced slavery. Of course, slavery was on them. They introduced a number of colonial, dictatorial regimes against Africa. Today, all the atrocities committed on African soil and the victims are still very much in the picture. As you, dear friends, are the salt of the earth, as you, the Biafrans, are the become of hope for the rest of humanity and on African continent, most of us have been victims, either directly or indirectly. They had that plot here on how to destroy Africa and her people. But today, we are back here. We are here once again on a very symbolic mission. That their ignoble conference of 1884 to 1885 was put in another perspective by this another song by somebody from this country, Stena, who was actually a friend of Biafra. They fought to defend the people of Biafra when we were invaded by the Northern House of Fulanese and other Western powers. That singular act of peace has changed the way we perceive this country. And today, the spirit of the Bullsaigo has been leading us and is still leading us. They perfected the plot to destroy us here. Today we have come back here to restore the hope, the aspiration, and our dignity. Yes. Yes. And that important journey, I must say spiritual journey, has been perfected by the German government granting the permission for indigenous people of Biafra to open our worldwide administrative headquarters. Stay in the city of Düsseldorf here in Germany. By this, they put a seal on the evil mechanism of the contraption called nature. Because they say that we are terrorists, they approach all the governments of the world, including the German government not to allow any IPV family members to operate here. But today, what is happening? We are here. We are here. The zoo and her officials are nowhere to be found. <laughs> but their fans are everywhere. Yes. Yes. And not only that we are here in this country, we have an office from where we shall be operating. Yes. Not only operating, we shall be executing every of our agenda, that shall continue to expose the contraption called Nigeria for what it is. See. An abominable entity, a solid pride on the world map. Conscience, they say, is an open wound, and only truth shall heal it. So they are saying that not only that, that, that assertion is right, 
Biafra is a thorn upon that conscience. And the conscience of the world must continue to be put under trial until Biafra is restored. We want to extend our hand of fellowship to all men and women of goodwill from around the world who have stood with the rest of humanity, especially those who cannot speak for themselves. The courageous declaration by the United States government led by Donald Trump and recognition, as you say, of the city of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. It's not only symbolic, it has ushered in a new era and a different kind of world politics. It has changed the face of world politics, not only for the less privileged around the world, but for all the genuine freedom fighters around the world, especially the Africans. Israel is a country we should be proud of in the end. At a time like this, we must take a stand. At a time like this, we salute the courage of the United States government in recognizing Jerusalem as an ancient city that has so much been deprived of its ownership by the people of Israel. Yes. We are saying that. In no time and very soon, the efforts shall be re recognized as well. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that it shall be recognized by just one superpower, it shall be recognized by the rest of humanity. Yeah. We have started that important process today and subsequently in this country. And from our administrative worldwide headquarters, we shall from now onwards be planning to executing the important steps and processes we need to undertake in order to conduct referendum in the whole of Kefa. In the next months, and years ahead, the people of Biafra, especially hardcore ones, dedicated ones, shall once again demonstrate to the rest of humanity that we are not only humans, but we are defenders of those who cannot defend themselves. We must stand up for all those who are not in position to defend themselves. We must all stand up against the atrocities being committed against the indigenous peoples around the world. The introduction of slavery and evil, a man, I mean, an evil conduct against humans by their fellow human beings has been looked or overlooked by the rest of humanity. The introduction of slavery, once again, we are seeing in the country called Libya. And human beings are being slaughtered like animals. People are being sold with impunity. People are jailed, they are human parts sold. And you know what? The majority of them are bad. Whether you like it or not. That is why we will not wait on it. We are not going to keep quiet. We shall not allow this horror to continue. We must awaken the conscience of the rest of humanity to stand against the evil, to stand against all manner of slavery and servitude, to stand against all crime against humanity, to stand against genocide and ethnic cleansing. Mohammed Buhari and his agents in Nigeria are happy with what is happening because it appears that it doesn't affect them. But it is our responsibility to mount pressure to all those in Biafra government officials to do the needful. 
But even without them, we shall awaken the consciousness, uh, the consciousness of the international community to do something. I think today, today in United Kingdom in London, there is a very huge pro uh, protest going on as a result of this. We are asking our people to join that all important protest because an injury to one is an injury to all. We must come back. Already there. We are commemorating today one of the <coughs> horrendous experiences that we have had in our lifetime in our journey to collective self emancipation and liberation. We are remembering our fallen heroes today, and at any opportunity we have, because the world has not seen. Perpetrators of evil crime against humanity, genocide against our people are still at large. They are still doing what they are doing with impunity. And until they stop it, until the rest of humanity, until Britain, for instance, apologize or do something in form of reparation to stop this horrendous crime against humanity, against our people. We shall continue to expose all these atrocities to the rest of humanity. We shall live and not die. Say. The Afro genocide here in the city of this is not only an exhibition that is right, it is also we want to this opportunity to welcome each and every one of us and to continue to disseminate the gospel of the Lord to the ends of the world, uh, to the ends of the earth, and among the rest of humanity. We thank the Most High God for having made it possible for us to have come here today. And as we are all here, as we are going back when we must have finished, may continue to guide and protect us. Yeah. May this union in this gathering this afternoon, this day, the 9th <coughs> of December 2017, bring us freedom, may it bring us progress, may it bring us happiness, may it bring us to the land of Yah. We shall not forget our people who are still in different secret cells and detention centers in Ebon Chapter in Southern Nigeria. Our brothers are in Kinje prison, our brothers are in DSS dungeon. They are in different police stations in Biafra. We cannot let them walk alone. There are some unscrupulous individuals who are going about saying that we have abandoned them. But the incontrovertible evidence that we have not done so is ever there for the world to see. All we are asking our people is to remain reasonable, to remain focused, and never to be moved by any form of intimidation or concocted lies coming from Nigerian government agents. You need to be focused need to be resolved because times are different. Our leader reminded us. Our leader, Marcin Nam, the county, wherever he is, shall be well with us. He said, He shall be well with the womb that gave birth to him. He He shall be well with his siblings. He shall be well with his associates. He and he shall be well with all of you here. He and the rest of our family members. He and genuine men and women of goodwill who have dedicated themselves to this restoration effort. He he and the youth. And the youth too. We are together. Yes. What else can we say? 
<laughs> we will, of course, progress on this all important program we have today, this event, by, of course, remembering one of the famous sayings of our leader, Master Muhammad. And he went this way. Before us, there were no people like us. And now we are on the stage. Are there any people like us? No! And when we must have gone, you ain't going there to shall never be any group of people like us. Yes. 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 Therefore shall be restored in our lifetime. Yes. Yes. And we shall all be witnesses to it. Yes. Yes. To the chagrin of our enemies, the land of Biafra shall be ours forever and ever. Yes. IPOB, one family. IPOB, one family. One family. IPOB. And we never got that information. But then, somehow, Chukwoki, how he does his things, he brought out um, a servant. He brought out a messenger who he sent because he knew, uh, or he, he still does know, that um, his children are lacking in very vital information and very vital knowledge. And like we say, knowledge is knowledge and, imp uh, and information. They are power. They empower you. Now, he started to tell us who we are. And it is from that and those things that we have learned that has allowed us uh, to leave everything that we are doing that has in fact um, given us the joy i would say because all of us here present today are happy to be here today uh, to be part of this historic movement uh, to be part of this historic event to be part of this moving trend uh, because we are going home to our fatherland and that is biafra land and before we do that um <coughs> It is very essential that we do what we are doing. We started, and it's still going to come. There are other countries on the line that will um, make sure that our story, our narrative, <laughs> is told by ourselves, and not allow the and not allow the um, corrupted media, whether they are Western media or whether they are the zoo media, are to tell our stories for us. So therefore, um, I will tell you the truth. The Jews, they didn't lose more people than their friends lost during the war. The only thing that makes the difference because they have the opportunity to tell their stories and give the number of people they believe that they lost in Germany. Your friends lost, and the saddest part of it is that we are still losing our people in Biafra land, in Nigeria, in Libya. Wherever you go, our people have been driven away because of hopelessness, because of the place they we are forced to belong to, and in Asia, you go to the prisons, you have the young, very youthful, energetic Biafran suffering. Are we going to allow that to continue? No. To no. Biafra, we not allow that. And we forbid that that should allow to continue, because that means that your children have no future. We want to take them back home. No matter what may be your um, your misgivings, no matter what you may not have agreed with that, um, how this event was put together, uh, we plead with you uh, not to dishonor or disrespect the spirits of those who laid down their lives for our sake. Our I don't think there is anybody here who is a Biafran who did not lose a family member during the war. It touched all of us. So um, we will continue to respect them even after Biafra comes. 
we must build something that never has been built as a monument for the millions and millions of Biafrans who died for our freedom. And that freedom, like I said yesterday as well, we, this generation, must ensure. We have no choice as a matter of fact. We must ensure that we bring it to fruition um, in no distant time. Um, for me, tomorrow will be better. But if it is after tomorrow, that is good as well. We must not let this fight, we must not leave this struggle to our children. So wherever you may be, whichever country you are operating as a family member of the indigenous people of Biafra, I request you, I implore you, I plead with you to double your efforts because the year we are going to, uh, the year that we are going to enter into two, 2018 is a very pivotal year for us. People tell for this struggle that we are pursuing, and therefore, all that we have put in by the grace of Tukukika Biyama made it possible for us. I'm sure, I'm confident, I have that conviction that He will not let us lack whatever we may need to bring this um, struggle, to bring this um, freedom that we are seeking. I will um, say welcome to all of you and uh, allow the moderator to please continue. Biafra Freedom! All hail Biafra! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Leader of IPOB for the revision. You know, knowledge is a kind of empowerment and it gets down, it diffuses from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. If you give attention to it. That is why we have to listen carefully. Because when we get all this information, I don't have to read the history book when I was listening to that deputy director. I don't have to pull in any book again. Because he diffused everything and with which I can enter into any argument. So we thank you, gentlemen, and we continue to thank you for your work. Now we have to give a rapt attention <coughs> to Dr. Emeka Victor Okan. You will do the presentation now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. IPOB, one, one family. family. IPOB, one family. One family. IPOB. Of course, call on sir. Well, uh, it's of great pleasure, first of all, to thank uh, the IPOB family in Germany for their qualitative initiatives. <laughs> This is not the first time. I remember last year, they had another important and current issue that is even demanding <coughs> much to all their friends, as our deputy director has ordered. That's the issue of their friend young generations and immigration. It was the IPOB family in Germany that brought that seriously into question last year in their conference at Moon under the coordination of uh, Tony Amade. Don't you miss Amade? I'm sorry for that. It's a motion of speech. 
and today we are having another important initiative that is going along with the inauguration of IPOB headquarters here in Buzardo. So thank you for having me and uh, permit me also to thank the leadership of uh, IPOB family in Germany for their consideration and for the regard they have in inviting me today to deliver this brief presentation. Thank you in particular to Nene, our <laughs> Minister of Finance. Thank you very much. Sorry for the, it's just a, a preliminary premises to uh, my discussion. Now, back to the issue in question, which is genocide exhibition. That word is very, very important. Today is an occasion for us to clarify that. Maybe many of us, we've heard many times people speaking about artistic exhibition. Artistic exhibition has nothing to do with what we are doing today. What we are doing today is genocide exhibition. In this case, what does that word genocide mean? Genocide in this, I mean, exhibition. Exhibition, when we talk about making exhibition on the atrocities, <coughs> committed against our people. What we intend by that, exhibit is an instrument, an instrument that can reveal a hidden truth. So this thing we are doing today is very, very important and paramount. It's part of, it complements even our restoration process. So it's very, very pertinent and once again, I renew my congratulations to the IPOB family in Germany and the directorate in, ge in general for having an important discussion. <laughs> well, I have presented myself initially. My name is Emeka Victor Kaido. I don't want to include my academic title. I am qualified academically as a professor doctor degree in various studies, but I normally to be in line, I am Emeka Victor Okiadu. I'm from Etiti in Okigwe province, Biafra land. So the title that I am presenting on this issue is Biafra Genocide. Restoration referendum is a challenge to this inhuman act. Well, as I said, that is a process that goes along with uh, our restoration. For us to be able to gather most of the information, put the one that we exhibit around us, it needs, we have to engage in a thorough research because what we are to present to the world is a fact. That's a reality. We don't find joy maybe in presenting images of a uh, denutrated or dead children or uh, uh, various different citizens mental with different kind of violence. Not that we find joy in doing that. When we see such images, it touches our heart. But because they are reality that we must expose. Because there has been that hidden and organized approach by Nigeria would have cohorts to hit tremendous facts that has done so much harm to our past, <coughs> present, and if you, young generation today, didn't put remedy to that, our future generation might continue with such atrocity. So that's why we have been able to go into various sources to bring up most of the genocide images that we shall be portraying very soon. Many of them come from government declarations from debates within parliamentary houses in various parts of the world. 
from eyewitnesses, from media editorials, and uh, many of them come from national World National Archives, and members of key actors have been involved in this discussion that we are holding today. So let us move straight to particular issues. One thing we have to bear in mind is that Ojuku, our first head of state, Odimegu Ojuku, on 5th of August 1968, when he was invited to the then Organization of African Unity, what we historically regard as the presentation of the Republic of Biafra in the Organization of African Unity. That's OAU. It was all African head of states invited. That was on the 5th of August, 1968. The main issue that hit the table on the floor of the OAU after this Ababa was that the Zoo government has been waging a genocidal war against Biafra and argued that it was appalling that this palpable genocide is being openly financed and directed by major non-African powers whose interest in the event is the economic and political advantage of their own countries. Although not directly named, the UK was seen as the principal supporter of the Zoo government and therefore of its genocidal war. The accusations of genocide were repeated by what some regarded as a very oriented Biafran propaganda machine, and that's why we have to view this exhibition today. Nonetheless, the accusations were repeated by important African head of states. Example is the Senegalese and Tanzanian presidents, namely Leonard Leopold Senghor and Julius Nyerere. All of them within that discussion, plenary discussion at OAU in Addis Ababa, supported Ojuku's speech that there's a genocidal war being carried against the people of Biafra. Well, Permit me to peruse or point out certain current issues because, as I've earlier made mention, Deputy has informed us that this time is extraordinary and we can't speak about this time without speaking about the restoration referendum. Then I have a question here. Why the restoration of Biafra for 50 years after? However, I'm not the first. This has been the question being asked by external observers. Italian institutional government has asked this question and in an important debate. Why the restoration of Biafra for 50 years after? Why did we wait so long? Before we start to speak about it. However, we have to, we can adopt a simple defense. Personally, and in a brief manner, I said it's legitimate defense for the survival of their front people under threat of extermination. In the sphere of fundamental human rights with a confirmatory act of referendum. So this has been what I may say a practical and academic explanation or motive why, the, why we want to restore our republic. And then another important thing is that their friends in their various generational tendencies, both the past, present, and hopefully the future, we are testing for liberty, justice, and peace. Then I have an important point to make in regards to this. It is because of this testing for liberty, justice, and peace that 
we had a connection with Finland. Remember the symphonic tune of our national anthem is normally being linked to Finlandis. That's a kind of tonal resemblance of uh, the Finlandis national anthem. The reason is that uh, remember our first president, Ojo, was an Osfordian that's studied in Oxford. So before the composition by Nam they had experience of various history of what was happening in the war during those period of mid-60s. It's important to let to my <coughs> fellow comrades know that the reason why we had the link with Finland is that more or less the resistance of Finland against the USSR, that, that's the old Russian Soviet Republic, resembles that of the little Biafra that had fought against Nigeria and the potential allied international coalition. That's the link, because Finland is the only, war, only country in the world that has defeated USSR. And then such, because of war, because they have the test of for liberty, justice, and peace. And had even not the complot against Biafra, already Biafra had already run the zoo government, the zoo country, before maybe the international uh, communities or cohorts came in, as Britain and Soviet Union. You know, remember, they fought uh, on the side of Nigeria. That's actually why the test for liberty, justice, and peace amongst the Biafrans can correlated to that of the king. Then another current issue is that why do we, what are the causes? Why we need, why we need uh, our restoration? There has been continual genocidal violence against our people. Think of the one that is practical. Remember one of the famous, or we might say one of the admirable, Zoo senator that we know very well has called for the restatement of the Biafran map. He has openly asked the Nigerian government at the floor, yes, that why did you remove Biafra from the map? So one of the causes is the cancellation of Biafra from the on the world map. That one is is uh, what happened, I mean, is we have witnessed that. It's, we are not forging or telling lies. Then another is economic and developmental annihilation. Remember the first project launched by our illustrious national coordinator of UK, Dr. Okachi, the, the Chinua the project that want to attribute a very, very historical and monumental relevance to the 20 pounds given to our parents after the Civil War. Remember, that was an instrument they engaged on that. It was aimed at economic and developmental annihilation of our people. Then another one that maybe we don't talk much, because it's important that we remember this, because this calls for the urgency like some people might be saying, why the referendum 2018, why can't it be 29? We urgently need to restore. But we must be very vigilant. We must be vigilant. And urgently we need to, because before we may, we, we may lose the stance. So another thing is environmental destruction. And then another issue is the terrorism of Islamic matrix. The, fem, uh, the infamous, I can't say the infamous, the infamous Boko Haram. All of us know about their evil agenda. And then you can see when we say that Biafra is a spirit. Remember the Boko Haram? Our first president, Odinei Boju, predicted that in the famous Biafra Manifesto of Ahara Declaration, he made it clear 
when he discussed about act of terrorism, from the experience that our people had, knowing that they have to do with people that have no respect for life and no respect for death. This was as of 1968. Ojuku in the Ahara Declaration made it clear that these people are not human beings, they are terrorists. Is it surprise that after 50 years, we are seeing that? Is it Ojuku that invented Boko Haram, that the world is seeing it? amongst themselves. So these are one of the causes why we urgently need our restoration. So back to our exhibition. This one is the first image that I have projected there is very, very relevant for us. Because on your left side and on my left side here too that's the image of Israeli children during the Holocaust tragedy method against them and then on the right are the dear friends then this was a postcard that I sent to Israeli institution last year when they had the Holocaust day so it was a postcard, and uh, they had a very wonderful response to that. I said, root of humanity, vic victims of inhumanity. How and when the world realized that they failed us. Remember, it was only when the world reduced us to this level that they understood that uh, these people, you know, are being maltreated that there's the tendency to eliminate, I mean, eliminate these people from the earth. So these are true images of genocidal crimes against Biafran Israeli children. You, we can see that they are denuded, denutrated, and those of our uncles and maybe present uncles, we can say, with their Koshoko epidemic. We can see that this is quite current. All of us can remember that we pay this. It's an IMP honor to the Bia France, Testament of Heroism and Martyrdom. This is from 1968. This is 2016, 2017. With the with the threat being meted against our people, you can see that why are we digging into national archives, making researches? It's because remember, our HOD made mention here that I was born during the war, but throughout my education in the zoo, they never mentioned. No day I came across a book that mentioned, I mean mentioned the word Biafra in the academic test. So you can see this artistic rendition of the genocide was further effort being made by our SID veterans that were scattered all over the world in US and Europe. So notwithstanding that there were no place to trace most of these images that we're seeing today. They, they went to the extent of starting to put an artistic you know, evidence of them. So this is what this you know, image represents. We know very well that it uh, all started around 1968, when Nigeria and the Gohos decided to use starvation of their friends as a weapon of war. And you can see, at this time was the beginning. We started to feel it, you can see. So when I'm speaking, you will remember that I'm more or less I was of this age as of that time. 
So, you can say, sincerely speaking, the experience, why we are making all these sacrifices that we don't wish that to any of our stipe, that's any of the line of our generation. Most of the time, when I recall or when I feel a nightmare of what I'm speaking about, something like remembering my peer. Personally, I was also in the college because at the time, for us to survive, the missionaries, mothers have no choice. They have to gather all of us at least to see that in a day, we may have something to eat. But the nightmare that at our age that we are having is that, you know that in case you have about 20 or 15 friends, those that are survived are only two or three. And you witness when they are dying and how they were dying. Even no matter who, I was maybe five, six years, but I'm still feeling it. Then there was, I remember there was an event that happened in my family when we were to write a brief history. You cannot remember that at the time, the list that came into that family tree of hierarchy was about up to 15 children of my, 15 kids of my age that died because of this. That's of my age, you see? And uh, I know how they died with a uh, big belly somewhere, you know, terrible. But however, this is it. So this is not uh, an image, a picture shop or what. But we try to project this to see. It was, you can imagine, not only having this as a symptom, but uh, a horrible way of dying. And then the zoo government thought that they can go free with all this. We can't permit them that. At all. No. We must, we must hunt them. We must hunt them. It doesn't end even after our restoration. We must continue to hunt them. Yes. So this is it. And that's why we are here. We have to bear in mind that the genocide urge against us goes in line with our restoration. Yes. They are not separable. So this is it. It was true, however, because I have Abino bro brothers, Abino brothers, those that are fairly, you know, like that have the color of carol, right? You may not even uh, notice that they are maybe black in color, black skin, you know. They are the most affected with this lack of protein kwashoka. They were the most they were very very fragile to that. If those with dark skin lasted for six months, they have only two months before that they, even their their belly was swollen, you know, explode. That was it. Albinus. Yeah yeah Albinus. <coughs> So this was how the zoo reduced our families, you can see. It's a very terrible... Uh... So this, what is important, we have to bear in mind that this is not Photoshop. And that's the meaning of that exhibition we are talking about. It's very, very important. Here it is. Yeah, it is. It's terrible. You see? It's very, very human. Very, very human. And then, though, there will be a chapter for all of you, because I'm very, very proud of all of you, to be sincere. This generation, you've done us great. God and history will never forget you people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's really still to say that. But I don't fail to say it when I'm given the opportunity to say it. 
So it was a desperate situation. It was terrible, terrible. It was terrible to be sincere. So what happened is that it is important, please. I have something to say. In August 1968, to the end of the war in 1970, why I'm trying to hammer on this point is because for us to know that what we are doing, the exhibition, genocide, is very, very serious matter. There was what British government planned with Nigeria because while we are moving along with this exhibition, we must distinguish between British people and British government. Majority of British people were on our side. It's not anachronism. The evidence that are there. It's only the British government policy that we are against us. So the world, the world reacted, saying, What is going on? What have these innocent people done? They're only fighting for their survival. Why are you people treating them like this? British government couldn't support the pressure being led by the rest of the world. What did they do? They adopted what they, they plan what they call international military observer team. So he yeah, referred it as British strategy. It was a maneuver campaign to distort genocide in Biafra. And the UK just the government's justification for its support of the Nigerian government. How did they do this? They firstly launched a final offensive. They reduced us violently to nothing. Then organized this thing they duped international military observer team. You can see that the observer team rendered no objective report as to whether or not genocide took place. It's important we take note of this. Then you can see I projected the images of the observers. You can see they are criminals. I went to the extent of hunting them, trying to know where they are now, who are they. I went to the extent to make a very deep. But what came out was that they were all secret agents, deadly secret agents, military secret agents hired by the British government to distort the genocide that was going on in Biafra. See all of them? They were three members. One is Colonel uh, Douglas Kens of Great Britain, Hugo Belunde of Sweden, Brigadier John Drewery of Canada. Trust, I tried to, you see that they were all criminals to do that dirty job. That's why I brought them up here. We have to bear that in mind also that it was part of the maneuver, you know, that are targeted against our people and that are still being targeted against us. We all are eyewitness how the Ohaneze Mordo and the cohorts, so-called uh, South East governors, how they collaborated with the Arewa area boys to do what they did to declare that all war you know, against our people and our leader. So that's it. Uh, we move along. I don't want to dwell much on this uh, so called international troops because they were just fake. It was uh, something done to destroy future. Like most of these informations we have today. Remember, the intent was to eliminate them from. Uh, that's why in in, in, uh, in the zoo, how do you find a test? Remember the boom of textbooks on Biafra came up 
thanks to our leader, Nandekan. It was after him that we had the boom of test on this year. So it's important to know that too. So you can see humanity easily grabs the, the wrong in a picture of dying Biafran people. Beside British, USSR, Nigerian cocked up complex political maneuver on genocide crimes against Biafran people. Humanity easily understood that these people, there's a horrible agenda. And then they mobilize mostly the humanitarian agencies. American Jewish Emergency Effort for Biafra Relief Force formed. Those of Canada, NGOs, I'm, I'm talking about Presbyterian Church of Canada and Osfam Canada. Those that brought the refer uh, the, uh, the the the, 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 the uh, relief. relief. Thank you, my brother. Those that brought the relief that uh, even maybe as I'm speaking to you today, was that little relief that uh, the few that survived that uh, helped us to survive. Maybe after you will see, uh, it was remarkable. You will see, I'm coming to that image. Maybe when will you see us to be obsessed with Oboroko, that was, <laughs> it was that come of that too. Because at the time, the only food we were consuming is that the kids that would come and give us a portion of football, a salted Oboroko. Stockfish. Yes, stockfish. Because it was one of the uh, um, um, food, the food that can serve, it was, uh, helpful more than even giving drug because the people who have to give drug don't have anything. I mean, their metabolism doesn't function again. So, uh, we have that their Cornish vet, a German church group, provided also help. They were good in that too. There's need to mention that. There's another point that we have to remember, which we have emphasized many times. On 30th May 1967, the indigenous people of Biafra then tagged Eastern Nigeria through her consultative assembly, unanimously triggered her right to self-determination. It is a historical fact that Biafra, despite international complot, demonstrated to Africa and the whole world that there is no human rights more sacrosanct than that of self-determination. When all the other reasons for the survival of a human family had been threatened by an artificial political union. Remember, who brought independence to the soul was Biafran. We have to bear that in mind. So what am I trying to say? We created another history that when there was this tendency to eliminate us from the earth, fortunately enough, after the League of Nations, that's Committee of Nations, well, the first form of Committee of Nations, the second was the United Nations. And one of the important articles, the Article 1, Paragraph 2 of their Charter, of United Nations Charter, which says to develop friendly relations among nations based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination of people. This is Article 1, Paragraph 2 of United Nations Charter. As of this time, 1967, no nation in the world has ever triggered it. With the horrible and inhuman experience and being led by a capable leader of such a rank of Odimego Juku, he triggered this article. He triggered it. And to the world, to them, they feel that Africans don't have such ability. 
who are these Africans that want to tell them that they have their right? So that was one of the problems we had in our first republic. Because the colonial world or the imperialists as of that time, they couldn't believe it that an African nation can emerge and say that from today, I know my destiny. Just what we usually say. Thank you. So the point there is that, as we can see, which country, the second country that triggered this article? The second country was Bangladesh. Bangladesh did has few months after our surrender, remember we surrender because of the humanity melted against us. We can never and we have never surrendered our sovereignty. <laughs> and if we are here today, it's because we hold our leader has taught us that our sovereignty is perennial. No one can take it away from us. So Bangladesh was the second, and uh, they were fortunate because the Asian countries, sorry, the Asian countries were more vigilant than those of Africans. They unanimously backed Bangladesh, and the United Nations had nothing to say than to Bangladesh is one of the recognized nations, but it's important we understand that they learned that from us. We had stumbling blocks because Eritrea, that is an independent nation today, was at that time pinching Emperor Heselese, who was the emperor of Ethiopia. So what they were saying is that as Biafra tend to set this wonderful example, many of those colonial stooges who pretended to be African leaders, and you have seen where history relegated them today. We are doing things that never favored the African people. And uh, we have to be proud of ourselves. We are their friends. So we must have to watch it. Well, some people used to say that it was a war fought by international humanitarian organizations. Maliciously, they say that. But what I tend to say is that thanks to them that few were able to survive. We have the Irish Catholic Holocaust Fathers, African Concern, International Committee of the Red Cross. We have the Red Cross. Not church aid, there's a protestant church from Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden. These people reacted against their government because they didn't understand what is going on. Why should they be killing human beings and kids? Not that you were attacking soldiers. Why? It means the agenda is clear. Later, we shall even see the reaction of Nelson, who later became the President of the United Nations. He made a public declaration on this. So, our meeting in Germany since yesterday, this is one of the pivotal issues that we must go on today. So, we have a lot of them. Remember our, uh, I don't know, but pardon me if I make a mistake. Our uh, Jewish elder brothers, I don't know if we are the elder brothers or they are our elder brothers, but I remember our brothers, the Jewish people, they have what they call uh, um, um, the tree for good people of various nations. Yeah, we shall have ours at the appropriate time, right? Thank God that Dr. Kachi is very, very eloquent. So we shall have ours. Three, four, Good people 
of humanity. One or number. That's it. So that's it. We must have at the appropriate time. We can't forget these people. And we are seriously recording it. So you see one of them, something like uh, it's famous. Uh, when you see Medicine Sons of Frontier, something like Bernard Kushner, who later from uh, many of you have heard about MSF, Medicine Sons Frontier. The founder was Bernard Kushner. He was an ICR operator. He protested against the Nigerian government that why are you not seeing the humanity being murdered against the Because of that, if he went to the stand or resigning, and it was from the experience that, the terrible experience he had in Biafra that made him to have a, what we have today, medicine sense frontier. So that's it. Uh, then another thing is that this is, as I said, that British people, we must have to distinguish that between British government policy and British people. This is a famous Osfam's public statements. Osfam is a British NGO that's international humanitarian organization. This was one of the, what you see there, it was a publicity that even they carried over the television, the media. What Britain must now face is that the price for a United Nigeria is likely to be millions of Biafra lives. This was a 1969 public statement made by Osfam. So, not made by IPOB, but by Osfam. We have to bear that in mind. And remember, they didn't, they were, they didn't hide, eh? They were, what you see here, they were in Piccadilly Square. They were in Piccadilly Square. See it, even in their postcard, they didn't, we didn't write it, genocide. This war must stop. This were British people, this were, this was on December 24, 1969. So you can see it, genocide. We didn't write it here. But then, why all these things were evident and clear? Remember, the Nigerian government, we had terrible stolen economic instrument. Their objective is destruction. Destruction. The only person that they were unable to destroy is our leader, Mazina Mekan. And that's why we're here today. <laughs> So where well, you can see, this was our, uh, you can even in Herald, this was a kind of uh, fundraising, you know, boss still in our, I mean, nude manner, you know, whatever, however, this was a fund that built by Evening Standard to see how to assist us. So this were the, um, remember that for me again. Uh, relief, relief, relief flies, you know. This is uh, one of the relief flies. You know. uh, so it was, uh, I just uh, included it in the image because many of them later were even abandoned at Venanda Po, up till now, you know. Even there was a time someone was calling that if their friends can, uh, come around and make that a monument to it because uh, it's still lying in Bernanda Po, you know, after we surrendered most of these things, you know. So they, this is uh, important to the Biafrans have gained a great deal of international sympathy by claiming that Federal government of Nigeria are bent on a policy of genocide. <coughs> this sympathy throughout Europe and North America has led to widespread and most embarrassing criticism of Her Majesty, Her Majesty's government on policy. As I'm saying here, that we must be able to distinguish over Her Majesty's British government policy and then the British people. But what is clear, is that there's an evidence to show that the British people were 
in our side, on our side. Because as you can see, immediately after the war, when even the heroism, I think it's his name, the then British Prime Minister, he, he sought for re-election and they didn't elect him. So, but it's, it's symbolic, although the, his damages has been already, you know, before that, then we have to also put that in history. So, in particular, the government's defense of armed cells was criticized intensely inside and outside British Parliament. The Archbishop of Westminster and Canterbury called for a ban on arms supplies to Nigeria. In May 1968, the Church of Scotland Assembly unanimously called for the ends of arms sales to Nigeria. And one speaker claimed the arms supplies would link Britain's name in history with premeditated massacre. And they are hiding away from this. We must hunt them down. Of course, of course. we must. The Guardian argued in July 1968 that stopping the arms is therefore the best way to save Biafrans from both slaughter and starvation. So thanks today that we are seeing this, we have to appreciate the media too. It was report of the press and photo reporters that we are able to have most of the images. Uh, and then uh, we may say that this tidal wave of journalistic interest was brilliantly delivered by the Biafran government and its public relations firm, the Mark Press. As of that time, the Biafran public relations firm was known as Mark Press. So they were carefully and humbly that they diffused all this information. And thanks to that, in various World National Archive today, we can be able to have trace of most of these things that happen. Sometime I've overheard, I'm sorry for making reference to Dr. Gatti because I know he's, he has a very, very you know, great interest on these researches too, uh, relating most of the parliamentary you know, sittings. I spoken British parliamentarians and the laws, they, they, they didn't keep silence. They questioned most of uh, the time, though we may say that is political, but still we have to recall them. Something like on 11 June 1968 in the House of Commons, one MP asked the Foreign Secretary whether he was aware of the depth of feeling in the country that arms supplied to the Nigerian government should be cut off so that we should not be a party to the slaughter. The wife avoiding genocide. The hair masking it with slaughter. Still slaughter is genocide. You can't slaughter human beings. Genocide slaughter. Yeah. Another asked him to reconsider policy on this point, particularly now when the dangers of massive slaughter appear to be broadening over the scene. A day later, an MP argued that it was, it has now become a war leading to possible extermination of a race. This is not an IPOB statement. Another said that so long as we are sending arms, we are partly responsible for the bloodshed. So we can now start to have a clear picture of our exhibition that is an instrument to reveal a hidden truth. That's what we are doing. We have, this is British citizens, people like Carol, that we have here today. As we can see, all of us, we know John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Because of Biafra, he made a very, important chest, similar to that of Akanibia. We can't forget these people. We can't silence them.
This is very, very important because it has never happened. This is called Remembrance Sunday in Whitehall. It's a kind of important annual remembrance that Britain normally, you know, does every year. In this case, this was on November 1969. They said at the end of this year's too many silence, demonstrators shouted, remember Biafra. Oh. They were quickly taken away by the police because no, no other time such has happened around Buckingham Palace that maybe the royal family, Her Majesty's there. So it all took place only 50 feet from where the Queen was standing near the cenotaph. So this is the Lucas of Gloucester, the King of the, So that's it. It's symbolic also. And then, as we can see, this is the American version. The American citizens were in silent. Here in August 1868, the placards, as we have. All of us, we are familiar with that because we have done a very good job over that. Their own placards is reading. I mean, it reads, don't let the lies go out on the children of Biafra. Apathy kills, which is what we are still suffering today. They are seeing the inhuman treat treatment that have been meted against us. They will wait till when we are deluded, they, 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 they nutri they nutrited, they know that, and in such a very inhuman mood, maybe they may call, you know, so our party kills. They know that, and then we must have to fight against this. <clears throat> so this was what the town 1,000 demonstrators protested at 48th Street and Park Avenue in New York. So this is the present reality. And then this was a postcard that I made, Republic of Biafra, US support of Biafra exit and no, US support of Biafra exist, persist despite oddities. We, we demand more from United States as we demand more from Israel. But up to now, uh, we have not uh, uh, seen enough, but notwithstanding all these oddities, we still believe and, and strongly, you know, hope that they will come in at the appropriate time. <coughs> Maybe we are still doing our homework. So you can see here, it's important that I read out this. This was a statement made by Nelson, he called that statement, called for American action on Biafra by Richard Milhus Nelson. This was on the 9th of September, 1968. Let's listen to this statement. The terrible tragedy of the people of Biafra has now assumed catastrophic dimensions, but genocide is what is taking place right now and starvation is the Grim Reaper. This is not the time to stand on ceremony or to go through channels or to absorb the diplomatic niceties. The destruction of an entire people is an immoral objective. Even in the most moral of wars, the time has long passed for the reclaim of hands about what is going on. This was said by a future American president, <coughs> and it's well recorded. Right now, we move along with John Trump, Donald Trump. The famous self-determination is the sacral right of all people. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, please for notwithstanding that Nigeria has also planted like we have seen it, they have planted 
all their agents too in all this effort. There's one U.S. academician, Roy Doran. Immediately, he sensed the Biafran support of Donald John Trump during the American election. He came out with an article saying that foreign policy from candidate to president, Richard Nixon and the lesson of Biafra. This was an article he wrote on 5th December 2016. So what he was trying to say is that uh, Biafrans, be careful. Let's hope that the same issue won't end up like that, those of Nixon. But still, as I said, we believe that U.S. support for Biafra must persist despite all it is. And uh, for our brethren or comrades from U.S., they know that we are desperate over them or with them for them to work more in this direction. So there are a lot of them, but I think we have to move along. That's the intellectuals, those that we are pro and against. But I may say, in all uh, majority, we are on our. It's like when you compare uh, supporters of our leader and that of Nigerian politicians, you know that they are bad. <laughs> Whereas uh, supporters of our leader now they can't even beg him, uh, can we come and uh, even. Uh, Render all we have in order to follow you, so something like that. So uh, there's two great difference between the two. Then we, this is another important issue, cancellation of Biafra from the world map. So I purposely brought up this map here because it was not prepared by Biafrans, but it was prepared by a serious study of number one university in France. Université Paris 1, Pantheon Sorbonne. This was their production. It wasn't only this production. They traced the history of the Biafrans from the 14th century. They traced it one by, even they went to the Vatican Library. They had access to the Vatican Library. They had access to British uh, informative so archives, sources that you cannot imagine. And then they came out, they were the people that made this image. As you can see, it wasn't, they did this early, mid, mid 60s, but they reproduced it 2017 again. They, they brought it up to the, I mean, general academic consumption. So this is it, it's not a production of our, uh, that's why I put the source. But as you can see, this is the map of uh, Atlas of Earth by the National Geographic Society of Washington, USA. This is their map. This is World Atlas of Africa. You can see 1979, as of 1979 to 1987, there is Biafra in the map of you see it there. It was clearly not even there's Biafra there. So when we talk about the cancellation, that's what we mean. So and then that's why you people are, you know, godly blessed generation. You can't imagine what you have done to your people. You people are great to be sincere. And you can't imagine. The world is just watching you, but you've done great things. So now, please, my fellow citizens, let us look, just let us neutrally, you know, even feeling that we're not part of that country, see the environmental situation of our beloved nation. 
You see it? The map you see by your right, I think by your right it should be there. Yeah. These are the um Soto Solo, that's the beneath the underground satellite view of how you know our our country has been reduced. That's the underground view. The pollution, that's underneath pollution. Then the other ones you see, then they are the overland, as Britain usually say, overground and then underground. The first one is the underground pollution. The one we and the other one say. So we're all not only having biological genocide, we're having environmental genocide. So well, this is our image of that uh, country. It's a, it's a bloody union. I think there's no way we can represent it by than putting it in this manner. So this is it. As you can see, although it's uh, written in Italian, but it's horror in Nigeria. You know, the massacre of the famous uh, Christmas bombing by Boko Haram in Jos. That's it. All our people there. Then, as I've made mention, as I've given my attribution to the Munich uh, God Metal, yeah, this was, I, 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 I remember very well that I showed uh, this image to of the sea route and trans Saharan migration of African youth. And then I decided to call it up too because I know that uh, our deputy has embarked on an initiative to see that what is going on in Libya must be exposed. And he strongly believes that IPOB can do that. So as we can see, this is the sea route and trans-Saharan migration, which even many of us sitting here must have experienced. And these are the victims. They are, in a way, our heroes too. And then, what does that show? African leaders have no respect for their young generation. We must have to start from there. We are not only attributing that as an alibi. We may condemn even those, but the issue is that our leaders have no respect for our young generation. So let's start to be, let's wake up. <laughs> let's wake up.
to ourselves. To be responsible and to be resilient towards the first administration of the effort. What we are showing here today is not a child's play. We are not here to play. Our people have been massacred and they want us to forget. It is our responsibility to do the needful. And now is the time. IPOB. One family. One family. IPOB. Well, uh, 24th April 2013, it must be a remarkable death for us. It's a day that our leader chose to accept the Nigerian media interview. All along, he has been operating Radio Bear for London. He has not given them such possibility. On that date, he accepted to be interviewed. And then a simple question, what do you want to achieve with Radio Bear for London? Our leader, Mazina Dekano, said, freedom and justice for and uh, if we are here, if we are where we are today, if we are where we are today, thanks for me. This date is remarkable for me. As a researcher, I don't put it aside. It's very, very remarkable. As other important days, our leader. You know, has made you know what is it? shows it. All he's saying is that uh, our leader, you cannot walk alone. So since then, we are walking along with him. Since then, we are walking along with him. Since then, we are walking along with him in different angles of the world. Since then, we are working along with him. Since then, we are working along with him. With all great enthusiasm. And very soon, that work will reach to its destination. So So this is the historic uh, Munich immigration meeting that I made mention before. So this was a clip that I had. So that was in Munich. And uh, as you can see, we had this family meeting. That was last year. This was London work, though it's a work of protest during the last day, uh, inhuman treatment against our people. <coughs> That's the, the London government of Zorka. And then uh, we are still on the walk with our leader. He cannot walk alone. We must walk with him always. So 
So we want to know who owns the land of Yafu. <coughs> So, well, uh, permit me, in order to conclude my presentation, I have a, a clip, a video clip of a few minutes. We've already sung the song before, Holy, Holy, Iman, the Kanun, the Samara Savior. We need Biafra, all we are saying, give us Biafra. And then background to current genocidal violence by the Nigerian authority. Then the title of the clip is in Italian. The all was nothing but an attribute to the young generation. Because from the starvation of uh, Biafran children, it has something to do spiritually, something to do. Why those who are to get restored Biafra are the Biafran young generation. So it has a good correlation. So it's a kind of attribute to our young generation. So if we may, now we can, I think the room is dark enough. Yes, let me just put the clip. Let me take an eye. I need the clip. Yes, by all means. Thanks, said you were supposed to be released. You were not released. Do you think you were treated in a fair way by the government? Or rather also by the justice system? No, not fairly, because Nigeria is not a civilized country. People behave like animals. They are not reasonable enough. They are not disciplined enough. They are not mentally developed enough to run a transparent, civil society. For them, they have a feudal mindset where you have the ruling class and a multitude of sports. Never others in the world in rebellion or to even ask questions about their plight. That is one thing we are determined to challenge. Don't you think you're in South of Nigeria as well as he says? I'm being very kind to be honest. I could have used far more harsh words to describe them. I'm being very kind. So, generally, you don't think very positive of your countrymen, then, obviously? They are not. When you say positive, not as individuals, perhaps there are a few good people amongst them. But as a collective, this is an absolute mess. And you can see things. Then you go through the roads, you see how horrible they are. Then you see how unkept everywhere is, how filthy and dirty everywhere is. That is the product of a Nigerian system that is uniquely backwards, even by the very thorough standards of Black Africa. That's the fact, and people must face up to it. Well, I traveled in the north quite extensively, and I went to very remote areas sometimes uh, where we would still find evil people living there, peaceful together with communities in the north. Don't you sometimes think that you might endanger their peaceful coexistence with the communities there, that they might get into trouble with that? So if they're living so peacefully together, or cohabiting so peacefully as you put it, how come you hear about all those uprisings in the north? where southern Christians are being slaughtered. I don't think there's none about it. Are you telling me that that is normal? People are in the north out of a daily necessity, more or less, to try and survive. Because here, the entire production process has been emasculated by people and policies that are geared towards a...
So you sit down. This is how it's going to be now. We have. Uh, 